Hello students, today we'll discuss IB Physics SL Paper 2, May 2018, Time Zone 1. My name is Nariman Malim, I'm located in Baku and here you can have my mobile and email. Sources that you can use in your exams. Main huge textbook from Oxford 2014, short textbook from Tim Kirk, Oxford 2014, and I recommend you to have IB Physics Guide from examiners. And uh, another source, which is Physics Data Booklet, is a must. Before exam, when you prepare, you should have this booklet with formulas. Consult this booklet, so this booklet will be available at the exam. That is very important. So. Paper 2 consists of 6 questions for 1 hour 15 minutes uh, and you can deserve maximum 15 marks. All questions are from HL Paper 2, uh, not all, but all questions are part of HL Paper 2. So you should have calculator and clean copy of physics data booklet with formulas. Question 1. Right, so let's put separator here. Right, separator. An elastic climbing rope is tested by fixing one end uh, of the rope to the top of a crane. The other end of the rope is connected to a block, which is initially at position A. The block is released from the rest. The mass of the rope is negligible. Uh, the unextended length of the rope is 60 meters. From position A to B, the block falls freely. A. At position B, the rope starts to extend. Calculate the speed of the block at position B. So from A to B, we have constant acceleration at G. For constant acceleration, we should look, as I mentioned here, to section 2, 1, in refer data booklet aha uh -huh. here we have one two three four equations for constant acceleration or deceleration in each of equation one of the quantity is missing for example in our case we have s u u is initial velocity g and b should be found no t so no t is this equation, v squared equals u squared plus 2a. So we choose this equation, substitute values, find square root, and give answer to three significant figures. Finished. Question B. At position C, the speed of the block reaches zero. The time taken for the block to fall between B and C is so much. The mass of the block is so much. Determine the magnitude of average resultant force acting on the block between B and C. Let's assume that we have constant acceleration. Uh, then force will be mass time acceleration. To find acceleration, again, we should consult uh, section 2.2. To one, sorry. We have u, we have v in the end it stops, we have time and we have a no s. So if we look to the formula, no no s is this formula v equals u plus a t. So we rearrange it and we actually get the definition of velocity of acceleration, change of velocity divided by time. So we get it with four significant figures and then answer we give with three significant figures. Finished. Sketch on the diagram the average result in force acting on the block between B and C. The arrow on the diagram represents the weight. So if this is the weight, the tension will be much greater because the result in force should be up. We have deceleration. And this is the picture. Calculate the magnitude of average force exerted by the rope on the block between B and C. So tension minus weight give us result in force. So result in force equals ten tension minus weight. So tension will be result in force plus weight. Weight equals mg mass times g. So this formula you should learn because it is not in the booklet. And then uh, using uh, 
So the fact the resultant force, as we found in previous question, is so much, we find tension to, two, uh, to three significant figures. For the rope and the block, describe the energy changes that take place between A and B. Between A and B, uh, the block falls down, so potential energy decreases, kinetic energy increases. So for block, potential turns into kinetic. Between B and C, between B and C, at B block has both potential and kinetic energy, and at C it has only elastic potential energy. So uh, potential and kinetic energy turns into elastic energy of stretched rope elastic potential energy of stretched rope the length reached by the rope is so much that just how energy consideration could be used to determine the elastic constant of the rope so from section 2-3 we see that elastic energy depends on uh, equals to half k uh, extension squared so extension is change of length it is 77.4 minus 60 and from 2, 3 we also understand that uh, change of potential energy from A to C is mg delta H so delta H is the new length of the rope so these energies are equal because one energy at C potential energy at C turns into potential energy at A elastic potential energy so we can find K Question two. Question two. Uh, let's look to question two. Right. A closed box with such volume contains three moles of an ideal monad atomic gas. The temperature of the gas is so much. Calculate the pressure of the gas. So section. 3, 2, ideal gas equation with number of moles. We rearrange this formula for pressure and we give answer in kilopascal with two significant figures. B. When the gas is supplied with energy, its temperature rises. The specific heat capacity is so much calculated in kilograms the mass of the gas. Section 3.1, energy supplied equals Cm delta T, uh, so we rearrange for mass and we get the uh, value with two significant figures. Calculate the average kinetic energy of the particle of the gas, so temperature will be calculated because it is increased from 290 by 23. And in section 3.2, energy of one molecule equals three second Boltzmann constant absolute temperature so Bo Boltzmann constant you uh, take from data booklet you should not memorize it and you get answer with three significant figures explain with reference to the kinetic model of an ideal gas how increase in temperature of the gas leads to increase in pressure three points so this is very easy points but you should get all of them what are the three points? Higher temperature, higher speed of molecules. One idea. Greater change in momentum and more frequent collision with wall produce greater force. Another idea. And pressure equals force over area, hence greater pressure. Learn by heart and write and, and get these very easy points. Question three. Uh, a beam of coherent monochromatic light from a distant galaxy is used in an optics experiment on Earth. A. The beam is in a normal uh, double slit. The distance between two slits is so much. The screen is so much. The diffraction angle is labeled. Uh, and then questions. A series of dark and bright fringes appear on the screen. Explain how a dark fringe is formed. So here I decided to draw two slits screen show passes from slits to one of the point on the screen the path difference when it is n plus half wavelengths then the waves will come in antiphase we have destructive interference they cancel each other and we have dark fringe appeared uh, double light the wavelength of the beam observed on Earth is so much. The separation between the dark and bright fringes is so much. 
calculate D. Uh, distance between dark and dark will be two times more. So this is distance between fringes. As distance between fringes will be two times this distance. And from section 4.4 we get a formula for fringe width or fringe separation. We arrange this formula for capital D and give answer, uh, get answer in three significant figures. The air between the slits and the screen is replaced with water. The reflective index of water is so much. Calculate the wavelength of light in water. So, uh, refractive index tells us that light slows down by so much. But also you can use a uh, ratio from 4.4 for refractive index and inverse ratio for speed. For air, refractive index is 1, speed is C, so in uh, material, uh, speed is n times less. From wave equation, section 4.2, uh, wavelength equals uh, velocity by frequency. Frequency doesn't change, velocity decreases n times, so we divide by n and we get new value. Say two ways in which the intensity pattern on the screen changes. Wavelength decreases. As a result, uh, single slit diffraction is seen in smaller region. And from 4.4, the fringes are closer to each other. So as we have more fringes, in, uh, intensity of each decreases. Question 4. Question 4. Uh, Omic conduct is connected to an ideal ammeter and have power supply of output voltage V. The, f uh, the following data are available for the conductor. Density of free electron resistivity and dimensions. Ammeter reading is 2 amperes. Calculate the resistance of the conductor. From section 5.2 we have formula for resistivity which can be written for resistance of a piece of wire. All information we have, resistivity is with two significant figures. This is why answer is also with two significant figures. Calculate the drift velocity of electrons in conductor in centimeters per second. State your answer to appropriate number of significant figures. Section 5.1, current is linked to drift velocity, so formula for drift velocity. Here we keep density in centimeters cube per centimeter cube and uh, uh, width and length in centimeters as a result we get centimeters per second question five electron moves in circular motion in a uniform magnetic field the velocity is so much magnetic field is so much state the direction of magnetic field so if electrons move to the right, then conventional current is to the left, and we need it for Fleming's left-hand rule. So if uh, uh, the push central, the thrust is towards the center, because resultant force should be towards the center. We have circular motion. So thrust is to the m uh, motion. Uh, s a second finger to the uh, to the left, then. Uh, sum will be so the field will be out of paper so it is written so uh, first finger field second finger conventional current sum thrust as a result we get out of paper calculate in newton the magnitude of magnetic field acting on electron section for one charge on moving uh, force on moving charge two significant figures answer we have. Explain why electron moves at constant speed. Force and acceleration are always at 90 degrees of velocity, so no component along velocity. Speed doesn't change. On a circular path, magnetic force and velocity are always at 90 degrees. Force and acceleration are at 90 degrees. We have centripetal force and motion. Question 6. The last question. Uh, a radioactive nuclide beryllium undergoes beta minus decay to form stable boron. Identify the missing information. Missing information is charge of 
number of protons or charge of beryllium and number of nucleons for boron the top number and bottom number should be equal what is missing here 0 minus 1 for electron so 0 top minus 1 charge so we ha have here two equations 10 equals x plus 0 plus 0 antineutrino 0 0 so x is 10 uh, here y equals 5 minus 1 so y and here 0 y equals 4 the num tot initial number of nucleons is n0 the graph shows the number of remaining beryllium in the sample with time on the graph sketch how the number of boron is nucleus varies with time so I made a table so beryllium turns into boron first n0 0, 0 then 0.75 the rest is bore 0.50 the rest is bore the 25 the rest is bore so I uh, put sketched here uh, I uh, marked here four points and draw uh, approximately smooth curve after so much time the ratio boron to beryllium is 7 shows that the half life is so much so I made a table beryllium boron after one half life half of beryllium turns into boron after two half lives we have only a quarter of beryllium the rest is bore the ratio is 3 1 after 3 half lives the ratio is 7 so actually 7 half lives has passed uh, 7 corresponds to 3 half lives sorry and this time is 3 half lives so we divide by 3 and we get answer so this question is done beryllium is used to investigate uh, ice samples from Antarctica the sample of ice initially contains so many atoms stays the number of atoms after so much time so initial number of atoms time passed number of half-life passed we should divide time by period we get two half-lives each half-life the number decreased two times so in two half-lives by two by two four times so we get this value an ice sample is moved to laboratory for analysis. The temperature of the sample is minus 20 state. What is meant by thermal radiation? All objects send out infrared radiation, which is also called thermal radiation. Discuss how the frequency of the radiation emitted by a black body can be used to estimate the temperature of the body. Section A2, peak's value depends on temperature. It is Wien's law by this formula. And hence, frequency also depends on temperature of object because we have wave equation. Calculate the peak wa uh, wavelength in the intensity of radiation emitted by the ice sample. So we use this formula. We calculate minus 20 degrees Celsius turn into Kelvin temperature, and we get this wavelength in with three significant figures. Derive the units of intensity in terms of fundamental SI units. Intensity from A to equal power over area, power equals work by time, work equals force time distance, force equals mass time acceleration. Then we put for each quantity base units and divide by meter squared. This is our answer. Paper is over.